Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Sandeep Janardhan Tandil, I am General and Laparoscopic Surgeon. Today's topic is continuation of the previous topic that is salivary gland. Last topic I have discussed about infection of salivary gland. This topic I will discuss about formation of the salivary stones. So what is salivary stone? The stones which form in the salivary gland are called as salivary stones. As I have discussed in a previous video, we have major salivary gland and minor salivary glands. Major salivary glands are parotid gland on both sides, submandibular gland both sides and sublim sublingual gland plus there are multiple minor salivary glands. Out of these glands, the salivary stones forms in the submandibular salivary gland. So now, why stones are formed? The causes of stone formation. First is dehydration if you are drinking in adequate quantity of water. Chronic illness where you are sick and your body immunity is down and you are drinking less water, you are dehydrated. Then third one, not maintaining good oral hygiene. Then other cause is uh, whenever there is salivary stagnation that is saliva doesn't come out properly. If saliva is forming, forming too much and doesn't come, side, come inside mouth, it is thicker then stones can form. There is some theory saying that some trauma, some injury to the duct of the salivary gland can cause the formation of the stones. Like So why saliv uh, submandibular salivary gland is more common prone for formation of salivary stones? Now in last video I have discussed about anatomy of this gland. This salivary gland secretes thicker mucus, like thicker saliva compared to the other salivary glands. The duct of this gland, the duct, the tube from which the saliva comes in the mouth, it has to go anti-gravity, that is it has to go from below up. So because of the anti-gravity, there is a more chance of stagnation of the saliva in this salivary gland compared to the other salivary glands. So whenever you are dehydrated, uh, chronic illness or the conditions which can cause stagnation of saliva or making the saliva more thicker, the stones can start forming in this gland. Now what are the symptoms with which patient can come, come with? The patient will come with the complaints of a swelling on either this side or this side like that is below the jaw or mandible they will present with the swelling. When this swelling happens like whenever the food comes in our mouth there is an automatic stimulation uh, which causes a secretion of saliva. So when the food will you start eating or chewing the food the saliva starts getting secreted now because it is blocked due to the stone saliva doesn't come out and you can see a bulge in this area you will have pain in that area. Once you finish the eating food, the saliva, this stagnation will go away, means the, uh, the swelling might disappear. This happens every time whenever you are having food. It happens more when uh, you are eating some uh, the fruits like lime or any uh, sour fruits or sour food if you are eating then uh, the bulge will be more and it will, might be more painful because of excess stimulation of the saliva that time. So uh, patient will present with a swelling in this area or this side. There might be pain associated with that. If it is infected, patient might get fever also. There might be a bad smell coming from your mouth. The patient might have an altered taste or decrease in the taste. So these are the symptoms with which patient can present in a case of a salivary stone. What are the signs? That is when you go to doctor, what doctor will check? If there is a swelling in that area, doctor will notice a swelling. If the swelling disappears after you finish the food, then doctor might give you something to eat to stimulate the saliva and the swelling might appear in that area during that during that time. Doctor will ask to open your mouth to see if any stones are seen in, inside the mouth. As I have told in previous video, the submandibular gland ducts open just below your tongue. That area, if the stones are blocked, doctor can see it easily. And doctor will try to check your entire oral cavity. He will see if the tongue is okay, your cheeks are okay from inside, if the gums are okay, he will check the floor of the mouth and he will check the back of the throat. All this inspection is important. Then doctor will try to examine it. He will put the finger inside the mouth and outside. He will try to check if there is a stone he can feel on the, in, in the tube that is a duct. That is called as a Wharton's duct. If there is a stone, then doctor will confirm that there is stone inside. Sometimes stones might be a little deeper inside, like that it is inside the gland which is sometimes not able to palpate with, with the fingers. Now what investigations you can expect in this? Doctor will ask you to do uh, x-ray of this, x-ray of the oral cavity, there are spe special x-rays for it, then uh, which will show the stone, the si size of the stone and which exact location stone is there. Second investigation you can expect is sonography of this area. 
doctor will ask, uh, get a sonography to see the size of the gland, whether stones are seen inside the gland, like the duct is beginning in that area or it is uh, at the distal part, like later part of the tube. Sometimes CT scan also might be required in case it is not clear. And if doctor has any other suspicion other than the stone, doctor might ask you to undergo fine needle aspiration cytology to rule out any underlying malignancy in that area. In that area. Now, what is the treatment? So, first will be the medical treatment. Like doctor will ask you to rehydrate yourself. Doctor will uh, ask you to drink adequate quantity of water. Oral hygiene, oral hygiene with mouth gargles or brushing twice a day. Then doctor will ask you to put some warm compresses in this area. Doctor will give you the medicines or uh, he will ask you to take the food which will stimulate more salivation uh, as there is a chance that if it is a smaller stone it might slip away and come out through the tube. If there is infection doctor will advise you to take some antibiotics along with the, uh, the treatment for the stone and hot compresses. If the medical management does not help you uh, the next treatment is a surgical treatment. Now in surgical treatment, treatment first if the stone is uh, visible or it is inside the tube the doctor will try to take out the stone through the tube by doing a salivotinoscopy in which a small tube is passed through, through the duct that is uh, the tube from which saliva comes and doctor will try to uh, grab hold the stone and take it out that is the one treatment if, if it is a chronic infection recurrently happening stones and stone is not able to retrieve by, by the by the scopy that is by putting a tube and taking it out the treatment will be removing of the gland that is submandibular salivotectomy in this the, uh, the surgeon will uh, under anesthesia this treatment will be done under anesthesia uh, it will be like one day you have to get admitted second next day the doctor will discharge you uh, in this surgery doctor will open in the area which side the stone and the gland is damaged and uh, after opening doctor will take out the entire gland he will find the stone take out the stone after removing the gland there will be stitches in this area which will be absorbable or non-absorbable depending upon the doctor treating and this is how salivary uh, stones are treated uh, once again i will tell you uh, to prevent the salivary stones you should drink adequate quantity of water if you are adult drink three liters of water unless restricted by a medical professional Second, you should have good oral hygiene that is brushing the teeth twice a day. You should uh, uh, use the gargles if required. If, uh, if you have any out of these symptoms, please meet doctor to confirm the, what problem you have so that doctor can treat you in early stage. Thank you very much for listening to me and my videos.